Now let's talk a bit about cross bites, okay? You're going to be treating a lot of cross bites. You can treat all types of cross bites. Canine cross bites, the most common are going to be laterals in cross bite, but you can also treat canines in cross bite. Okay? You're going to treat a fair number of these canines in cross bite, and they can be treated in a very straightforward fashion. Okay, in this case, look, we had a retained primary tooth and a canine that was way in crossbite. And we're able to bring that tooth very predictably into alignment. Now, when you're correcting anterior crossbites, there's basically a one, two, three system. First thing you have to do is you have to create mesial distal space for that tooth to shoot through the hole. How do we make space for these? We use reprox shape memory of nickel titanium, and open coil spring. Okay, those are the tools we use to create space to bring, say, a lateral incisor forward out of crossbite. Next, we have to remove our bite interference. Almost every time, those teeth are way super erupted. So not only do you have to make space, you have to uh, remove that bite interference, so that tooth's going to have enough room to skip over and out of crossbite. Now, how do we remove bite interferences from these deep bites? Buildups, composite buildups. Then we have to engage the tooth to bring it forward. I find the best way to do this is with a power chain trick called the slingshot. Okay? That's a way to bring those teeth forward very quickly, very predictably, with um, very little chance for unwanted adjacent tooth movement which is what can very easily happen if you're using continuous nickel titanium arch wires in these situations. So make space, remove the bite interference, engage the tooth to bring it forward using the slingshot. Okay, again, we're going to first make space, open coil spring, reprox, and shape memory nickel titanium arch wires rounding out the arch. Again, open coil spring going to help give us more room to shoot that tooth through the hole. and measure those springs correctly from the mesial of the bracket to the mesial of the bracket of the adjacent teeth you're trying to make space for. So again, first we're going to create our space, reprox, shape memory nickel titanium, open coil spring. You don't even bracket the tooth until you make space for it. It's going to serve no purpose to try and go after that if there's no room. The tooth will not move if there is no room, and all you're going to do is set yourself up for a lot of undesired side effects. So make space first. Then we're going to remove our bite interference with our composite buildups. Remember, we like one on either side of the midline. Next, we're going to use a slingshot, a power chain trick that goes from the, in this case, the canine through the contact between the canine and the lateral around the lingual of the lateral through the contact of the lateral through the central and onto the central bracket. Now you want to keep the open coil spring in place when you are using the slingshot. Remember power chain can rotate teeth, right? So if I did not use the open coil spring in this situation, what can happen? Both the canine and the um, central can rotate in the directions I don't want them to rotate towards that lateral eating up my space. So the open coil spring is going to maintain space that we've made and prevent undesired rotation. This is a great way to shoot these teeth through the hole. So again, here we have a lateral and cross bite. We first create mesial distal space, reprox, nickel titanium, open coil spring. Next, we remove our bite interference with our composite buildups. Next, we engage the tooth in crossbite with our slingshot. Keeping the open coil spring in place. Slingshot and open coil spring are always a team. They always go together. So here's an example where that's exactly what we did. This was actually a transfer case. So this patient already had his lateral incisor bracketed. Normally, I won't even bracket that tooth. It's not going to be anything but a plaque trap. Uh, until you bring it forward and engage it into an archway, you don't even need the bracket on. Anyway, we went ahead and we are making space, 
reprox nickel titanium open coil spring. Then we remove our bite interference with our composite buildups. And then we place our slingshot. And keeping your open coil spring on there, slingshot and open coil spring work together. And it's called the slingshot because see how it looks like a slingshot being pulled back? And it's going to shoot that tooth through to the facial very quickly. Usually an anterior tooth is in one visit and a posterior tooth is in two visits most often. Then you can bracket the tooth, get the wire to it, and finish up. So just another case using the slingshot. Again, we've made space and we're shooting the tooth through the hole after removing the bite interference with our buildups. Now the day you put the slingshot on is the day you put the buildups on. If you don't have a deep bite to correct, other than that tooth that's in crossbite, there's no reason to put the buildups on until you need them. Okay, they're only on when you need them to be on, so they're serving a purpose. If you just put buildups on, and you know, and you're not moving that tooth forward, all you're doing is irritating the patient. Okay, so you put the um, buildups on the same day you put the slingshot on. Now the lower canine is, a lot of people will say, the hardest tooth in the whole mouth to move, okay? This is going to show how powerful these slingshots are, because I'm doing a slingshot on the lower canine, and in just one visit, that tooth was in position to the point where I could bracket it, okay? So these are very strong in this system of making space, removing bite interference, and shooting it through the hole using the slingshot is a very simple, predictable and powerful system. Okay, so that's the way you want to treat anterior crossbites. Now, when you're placing these on anterior teeth, uh, you typically want to put a little composite ledge or an anchor just to keep the power chain from slipping off of the tooth incisively. You don't have to do that when you do them on uh, premolars, which I'm going to show you how we do that as well. Okay, but on the anterior teeth, just a little ledge of whatever, flowable or regular composite, whatever you happen to have handy, just to keep that chain from sliding up and off the tooth. Another option, as opposed to the slingshot, is what I call the alignment piggyback. Okay, instead of using a power chain slingshot that goes around the tooth, you can place a piggyback arch wire that goes to the tooth. We have our main wire in the slot. In this case, it would bypass that blocked out lateral incisor. Uh, I like a bigger wire, 018 nickel titanium or, or stainless steel. And then I piggyback an 014 nickel titanium arch wire that goes back to that protruded lateral incisor. Okay, and I generally like to go from canine to canine with the piggyback in these situations. And that's going to regain shape memory and help bring that tooth forward. As you can see in this clinical example, we're doing the alignment piggyback on this lower first bicuspid. So I have my main wire, an 018, either stainless steel 018 or nickel titanium, either one is generally fine. And then we piggyback a 014 nickel titanium, go at least two teeth on either side, and you're generally in really good shape. Now, when do I use the slingshot versus when do I use the alignment piggyback? If the tooth is rotated, okay, like this tooth is in this example, this bicuspid, I tend to use the alignment piggyback more. Reason being, I can correct the rotation and bring that tooth facially, you know, simultaneously killing two birds with one stone. If the tooth is straight but just palatally or lingually displaced, I tend to use the slingshot. Okay, both work great, but that's how I choose. Also, for whatever reason, uh, as in this case here, I like to use the alignment piggyback on canine cases um, more so than I like to use the slingshot. Like in this double canine uh, crossbite case, I'm using a um, alignment piggyback. I have an 018 uh, nitai or uh, steel main wire and an 014 nickel titanium piggyback going to both canines. And you can see within just a couple of visits, those canines, which is a difficult tooth to move, are brought into position. But see, what did I do? I made space. That's key. You got to make space first, then put your buildups on the same day you're doing either your slingshot or your alignment piggyback. Okay? If you follow that one, two, three system, anterior crossbites are going to be absolutely no problem for you. None whatsoever.